All right, let's get started with the first piece of equipment of the test kit. That piece of equipment is what we call a refractometer. And I'll take my pointer, if you can see it here, I'm pointing right to the refractometer. Let me move this cup out of the way here. You can see it. We recommend the VG BTX1. It's an automatically temperature compensated refractometer. Uh, that means you really don't have to do anything with this refractometer, you just, uh, the only thing that has to be done is calibrate it. You don't have to worry about temperature. It does all that by itself. It's about $110. It's a very, very nice refractometer. It has a very uh, nice visual screen. A little bit dirty there right now, but I um, should be using this here to wipe it off. And um, that's the refractometer. That's the first piece of equipment. What I'm doing is going through everything you'd have to buy from Pike first. And then, and then we'll, get over, we'll get into other equipment that you, you can just buy at the regular store. Your next piece of equipment is a rather, it's a large set of equipment. It's called the UPH3 kit. And what this UPH3 kit is, it will give you all the things you need to run both the pH tests and the, both the urea tests. And I will explain to you why we like the pH testing kit here. Um, what comes in this kit here is this foam block and also what comes with the kit are these four pH indicators. You have your bromcrestle green, chlorphenol red, bromthymol blue, and phenol red. I also recommend that you get one extra bottle of the bromthymol blue, a larger bottle. This is a uh, 30 milliliter bottle and these are 15 milliliters here. The reason for getting the extra one is you use this the most out of all of them and you will go through this rather quickly. Therefore, uh, on my site, I suggest you buy an extra one of these. Also in this kit that will be included will be these little vials here, these little mixing vials. Uh, you get, I think, I believe you get six of them with the kit, six or eight of them. Uh, I'm going to show you some other culture tubes that would be, be you'd be better off buying though later on because uh, you don't want to really want to be washing these out all the time so but you will get those you'll also get these pipettes and they give you I think 12 of them with the kit and they come with the rubber bulbs also um, you'll also get this ceramic well plate and we call this a 12 banger and basically, when we do the uh, test, we'll be using the, for the, you'll need six wells for each test you do. So on this particular plate, you can do two tests. Because you'll, you'll use these two for, or these four for your pHs, and you'll use these two for your ureas. So you can see that you'd have enough for two tests. Um... Okay, the next thing you're going to get with the UPH kit is the UPH3 kit is the universal extracting solution. This is needed to extract the nitrogen out of the urine. You'll get a large 250 milliliter bottle of it. That bottle will then be the contents of that bottle will be transferred into a smaller bottle, which I'll take out here and then into that bottle you will insert a glass pipette with a cover on it and that will stay in your block like that until you need to put more of this solution into it, this extracting solution into it but you want to you want to put it in there so you have a working bottle and you only work from that one the next chemical that you'll get is what is called the uh, nitrate nitrogen uh, nitrate nitrogen test solution or nitrate test solution it comes in a bottle just like this this is an old one so I have to explain to you and it comes with a cover like this not the pipe in it what you would do is when you get this you would put it into your foam block and you would then unscrew the cover while holding it and you're going to put this cover into your catch basin 
which I'm going to explain a little bit lo uh, later, uh, that would be filled with distilled water and baking soda at the time, but right now we'll get into that later on. And then what you would do is after you remove that, you would take another one of these glass pipettes, which comes with it, and, and it also has the, the cover to it, and you would put that into the bottle, and then you have your working bottle with it. One thing I recommend also, and this is also on the web page, everything you need is listed there, is that you get three extra of these glass pipettes with the covers on them. The reason is, is that the bulbs are very sensitive to the gases that are emitted from the sulfuric acid and you will probably go through two, maybe three of these in a year because it just goes through no matter how careful you are it'll go up and it'll eat right through the uh, rubber bulb and once it gets a hole in it there's no vacuum and therefore you can't draw it up anymore. So I recommend you get three, that usually is enough to get you through the year. Uh, we recommend that you change these chemicals out once a year. Or more if you're doing a lot of testing obviously. The final chemical that you would get with this with this UPH3, uh, UPH3 test kit is what is called the ammonia nitrogen test solution. It comes in a little uh, 30 milliliter bottle like this. You see the cap on the top. What, that will be, what will happen with that is that they'll also send you a plastic bottle and a working bottle and they also send you a plastic pipette with that. You will do the same procedure as you did with the sulfuric acid. You'll put your bottle in here, your plastic bottle in there. You'll open this up. You would pour it into that bottle. Take this, put the cover back on, throw it away as it doesn't need neutralization. I'll show you how the other one would have to be neutralized. And then you would take your plastic pipette and you will screw that into there. At that point now, your, uh, your block would be ready with the vials. Uh, and, the, and the pipettes and your, um, your well plate here. So that, that's everything that comes with the kit. These culture tubes here is another thing I'm going to show you. I can show you that right now. This is what I recommend. It's a packet. comes 250 for a packet. Cost about 18 bucks. Well worth it. That way you, you take these culture tubes. When you use them, you just throw them in the trash. We don't have to worry about cleaning them because they're cheap enough to discard. Okay, that takes care of the UPH3 kit, and we talked about the extra bronthymol blue indicator, and now we're going to talk about one, the, the next meter that you're going to need. This is called the conductivity meter. It's made by Hanna, and as you can see, it's the, uh, this is called the DIST4 meter. It's about a $58 meter. It's, uh, it works as well as the $96 meter and it works as well as the $390 meter. I have all three of them. I've compared them. There's no need to spend a lot of money. This is a nice piece of equipment and uh, as you can see it has a cover on it. It's very simple. The only thing you have to do is to calibrate it. It comes with a little screwdriver to do that and your little screw on this one is uh, I believe it's right here. Yeah, that's your calibration screw right in there. We'll show you how to do that when we learn how to test the salts. All right. Next piece of equipment, or the next part of the equipment is going to be you're, that you're going to get is what is called conductivity conductivity reference solution, 12,880 micro siemens. This is what we use to uh, calibrate the conductivity meter with. We pour some off into another cup and we'll use it to make sure that the it's calibrated to 12,880 and we'll talk about that more in the lesson on testing the salts. Another thing you're going to want to buy and which is also on the test kit, uh, on the test kit page, everything here is on the test kit page except the extra equipment uh, that you buy elsewhere is a spray bottle. This comes in very handy when you're spraying off your refractometer, when you're shooting distilled water on your DIST4, you might want to clean out your well plates. It just comes in very handy for a lot of different uh, uh, applications. I might even recommend another one just in case where you can have one with the alcohol distilled water solution and also one with just distilled distill water in it. Okay, we talked about the three extra glass pipettes already. The next piece of equipment, lab, lab where you'll need is called a graduated cylinder. 
you can get them in either glass or plastic. The glass one is $13, the plastic one's uh, $18. This is a plastic one right here. This is generally used if you want to do the uh, dilute method for testing the salts. And this comes, you're really going to need this to do that uh, because you'll need the each graduated cylinder, the uh, measurements here. That's another piece of equipment that comes with the test kit. Uh, we talked about the culture tubes already again, right here, that comes with a packet. Uh, again, just buy it, you'll have it for a long time. And finally, we have the copies of the cards for reading the pHs and the ureas. I want to explain something about these cards. These are the pH color cards that come with the kit now. I'm sorry, I have a little stain on the uh, chlorophenol red one here. For whatever reason, Lamotte has changed the colors and they are different now than they were when these kits were originally purchased. And so what I'm recommending to my students and my clients is that they buy a set of copy uh, a, a a set of the copies of the original cards that I have made copies of, which is the best we can do for now until such time as we can reprint them brand new again. These, as you will, as you will see, especially when you get them, just are off way too much. This is the type of copy you'll get, um, but it will be all on one page. Let me show you that. I'm going to get that right now and what you would have here is these are the uh, the copies you would be sent again I have to apologize for the staining on the cards mine are they're old but they are accurate and this is something that the new cards are not and therefore it is a well worth worth investment for you everyone has that has bought them from me have said that they're very appreciative of having them because they do make a difference in the test. Sometimes as much in the pH, as much as 0.3 or 0.4 off, and that's significant. Okay, we have the same issue, problem, with the urea cards. The new urea cards, you will see, here is the nitrate nitrogen. You will notice the comparison between the two. Uh, they're just, you will see the blues here, how different this, this row is, especially right here. This is the old card, this is the new card. You can see it says 1985 Adaptive Living, and this is 1979. I like the 1979 better. I think you're going to have a, uh, an easier time reading the ureas. They just look so much closer to these readings than they do to these. Again, that would be included. Uh, let's see, here's the, uh, with the uh, pH cards, here's the uh, original and the new, this is the new and this is the original uh, of the ammoniacal nitrogen, the cationic nitrogen here. So you'll see the difference, uh, quite a bit of difference actually. And again, this is a copy, uh, one of the copies that I make and it's well worth the $25 for both copies. They're laminated. They're going to last you a good long time. That's postage paid to anywhere in the world. Okay. The, uh, that takes care of everything that you would need to buy from Pike and of course the cards you would get from me, the extra copies. Now we're going to go into some other labware or just extra things that you'll need for cleanup or for running the tests. And the first thing we're going to show you are the cups where you collect your specimens in. Okay, the first thing would be a clear cup. This is where you're going to collect your urine in. Make sure it's clear. You don't want it to be, you know, it, you don't want it to be of this color. Okay, because you need to be able to look through the cup. These are eight ounce cups, I believe. You, you can buy them uh, in, a, I think it's three dollars and twenty nine cents for twenty of them in the supermarket. So that would be to catch your urine. I recommend these for the saliva. They're like a little, whoops, excuse me, they're like a mayonnaise cup, mustard. You find them, you know, sometimes at parties or buffets. 
and you can get them at the restaurant shops. Buy a whole bag of them and you just toss these out after you're done with them. The uh, next thing you'll need is paper towels. Are we able to see the paper towels here? Okay, I'm going to bring them over here just to show you. You need a roll of these. You want to have handy all the time and uh, so you can use them whenever you want. I like having them on like some kind of a stand too, which is good. If you can see this, some kind of stand like that is good. Tissues, as you saw, first I used my thumb, not a good idea. Best thing is to use tissues to wipe off your refractometer uh, pane of glass there. You want them to be very soft because we don't want to scratch the, uh, the, the, the glass pane. You'll need distilled water also. Some of you may distill your own. You buy a bottle of distilled water. This is found in Walmart. 80 cents a gallon, a little less than 80 cents. Very good stuff. Good distilled water. Steam. It's steam distilled water. Yeah, we need to make sure it's steam distilled water. Make sure it says something. Uh, like here it will say... Um, uh, processed by UV treatment, micron filtration, steam distillation, and ozonation. And what, if it doesn't say steam distillation, it's possible that it really wasn't the steam distilled. We had that happen once. I boiled it down and it was not uh, pure distilled water. Okay, rubbing alcohol. That's another thing you'll need. We'll be mixing this with distilled water to make a final... Uh, for our final cleanup. You'll need some detergent to wash your equipment with. Any kind of uh, dish detergent will work. Something like this. That'll work. You want to use something though that washes off really well. Don't get something that's going to leave any kind of film. Okay? Uh, whatever, these are usually pretty good. And we have just a few more things that you'll need. You're going to need baking soda. This is the Hannaford brand. Arm & Hammer is the one that's most mostly known. We're going to be using that because we, uh, I'll show you in a minute what we'll use that for. So get, make sure you have a box of baking soda. Um, you'll also need a flashlight. The flashlight is used to uh, shine through the urine uh, cup, which is again why you want it clear, so we can look at the particles in there and when we do our albumin reading. You'll want a large plastic bowl. This isn't all that large. This is okay if you're doing one or two tests. You'll note that uh, this fits in there just about right. It's actually a little bit too small, but you'll need, I use the small, the six plates, so they would fit in here a lot better. But you'll need a bowl, something like this, where you're going to mix uh, water and the baking soda. And so, and the reason you're going to throw the baking soda and the water into here is that it's a neutralizing solution. In case you should happen to spill uh, the sulfuric acid, you could toss this on it real quickly. Um, and also, if once you're done doing the test you're going to take your plate and you're going to put it in here and it's going to neutralize the sulfuric acid that's on this plate before you go to um, putting it in a, uh, the bathroom sink and doing your final cleanup. The final things you'll need we were never taught to use these in the past but I think it's a good idea to consider them. A, a nice pair of safety glasses cover your eyes completely they would be it's a good consideration you know you never know if you get a spill most of these chemicals are not too bad but there are the sulfuric acid is a problem the uh, ammonia nitrogen it is potassium hydroxide uh, and also the universal extracting solution those three could cause problems if you got them spilled in your eyes especially the sulfuric acid and rubber gloves also that's uh, all, another good idea you, when you're testing people that you don't know, especially you just don't know what could be lurking in the cup. So you want to make sure you keep your hands uh, well protected. That pretty much takes care of the first lesson here that we like to give on the equipment. 
and the next lesson we talk about will be doing the sugar doing the sugar tests thank you very much